So this is my uh, cable station where uh, where I make up cables and and uh, do some heat shrinking and whatnot. Um, and uh, previously um, in my other camping uh, adventures, I bought this uh, little hydraulic crimping tool, and you know you would have seen this on a lot of different channels. It's a great little tool. Um, it's fairly cheap and cheaply made, uh, but for the price point, it does a great job. Um, but I was, um, well, potentially needing larger crimps, and um, I was looking at trying to get something a little bit uh, easy to use. That guy is okay if you can stick it in a vise, uh, or you've got an extra set of hands. I don't always have an extra set of hands. So, <clears throat> um, I scoured the internet and uh, found this guy. So this is a um, an April, I assume that's how you pronounce it, April um, hydraulic um, crimper. So it's um, it's a little bit different to the design where you've got the um, it's a separated tool or a, a hose into um, the crimping head. Um, and I got this off um, uh, what is it AliExpress. Um, and I'll try and put the link in the video um, and yeah it got here really quickly the freight was an absolute killer to Australia it weighed six kilos came in a came in a very sturdy box uh, which I'll probably reuse um, but that's you know that's the price you pay I guess the unit itself the freight outweighed the unit cost so I think 80 Australian dollars for the unit and and um, yeah a lot more for the for the freight so i don't know it is what it is it is it does look um really well made uh all the fittings are good the dies are really nice um i have given it a, a test go yesterday on a short cable and um it was beautiful i was able to do a double crimp super super easy having that floor based um and a sturdy base to crimp in um makes uh, things a lot easier um, when you certainly when you're doing it yourself so I was able to simply um, back that off slide up the lug and, and do a double crimp and it, uh, it all beautiful so yeah here we go we're um, we got to give that uh, a crack shortly when I make uh, make up some cable yeah like I said this it uh, starts out quickly um, when you try and get yourself set up properly to do this um, you know, uh, even heat shrink these days isn't uh, necessarily cheap. Um, and then you need different sizes of heat shrink. Um, same with the lugs. Um, you know, you have um, cheaper lugs that are, you know, lower rated. Uh, but as soon as you start to get up into the higher amperage, higher voltage stuff, uh, the cost of, um, I guess, components and in, uh, connectors uh, starts to get up there uh, fairly quickly. So, yeah, it's um, it's one of those things you don't know until you're in, um, but I'm in, so um, I've got everything I need now to get this working. Uh, certainly on the DC side, uh, the 240 volt side will take um, a bit more work, but uh, and probably not won't be done by me. But um, yeah, I'm uh, keen to get the DC side up and um, sort of connected. So. Anyway, we're going to make up um, our negative and positive uh, leads now, so um, let's get into it. Knife is sitting a little proud there. I think can't seem to get the right tune on this uh, cable stripper. This is an awesome bit of gear for uh, stripping large diameter cable. Uh, it has a small blade um, in there, 
and uh, you stick it on, it's got spring loaded, pushes it into the cable, you do a couple of turns, you feel it cut through and then you can uh, pull it out and it does a horizontal cut as well, which makes um, makes getting the cable um, end off. And uh, yeah, you have a, a very nice uh, crimp, crimp side of the cable. Uh, strands, just trying. And bell mouth lugs for the win. They are brilliant, so there we go. So, got him home, so that's great, he's ready for crimping. There we go, slot him in there. What I'm trying to do here is just keep the shape of the lug the same. So um, by just sliding it along, um, the idea is it doesn't get uh, too deformed. Gives you a nice consistent crimp. So I'm up against that flange section now on that lug. <clears throat> Close him up and crimp away. Looks a little crooked. Okay, all done. Let's have a look. Pull that out. There we go. So yeah, nice consistent crimp there. Well, I think so. Um, right along the body. Plenty of. Plenty of mechanical strength in there. You're never going to pull that out. Basically, cold welding uh, rather than solder. Um, <clears throat> we can start to see the the strands at the tip there. Um, so he's ready for some heat shrink in a moment. Time to go again. This is the other end of the cable. Put a little deeper in the die this time. But yeah, this crimper makes it so much easier and I think the quality of the dies are a lot better also so <clears throat> um, yeah I'm pretty happy with my purchase so far yeah there we go the trick with all these crimpers is to uh, never back it all the way off because uh, it just requires too many pumps to Get them back in again. So here we are. The back end, back into this lug. I like the fact that you can that you can uh, double crimp these. <clears throat> and we are done. Oh, that's really nice. I like. Uh, like that, <clears throat> very consistent crimp. Very consistent. Loving it. So now, um, yeah, heat shrink time. This is a great heat gun. My only gripe with it is that you have to hold it. So um, when you're trying to, when you need a third set of hands, it would be great to be able to sit it on the table and be able to use both hands um, on the cable. So especially when they're long, they can be a bit um, hard to manage. Uh, but anyway, we'll we'll get there with this one. One.
Nó rất nặng Yeah, just like a bolt one. Um, probably better than a bolt one. Because I know what quality components are going into it. And they weren't cheap. So yeah, um, double walled heat shrink with uh, an adhesive in it. So the adhesive comes out and seals up that, <clears throat> seals up the voids. Um, like I said I probably should have used a thinner one, but um, I made that rookie mistake early on. So here we go, one down, another one to go. I've got this dialed in now, and I've got my heat shrink on already. There we go, look at that. Perfect strip. <clears throat> and I haven't, uh, haven't upset any of those strands. So. Well, here here we are. Uh, I've got some progress happening. Um, I know this is going to change about six times before I'm really happy with it, but um, I guess it's just a little bit more testing at the moment. Not really uh, looking to get too advanced with it. Um, but yeah, I've um, got the main switch here. I've got the battery, uh, that lead we made up connected into our shunt for the negative as well. Uh, that's connected to the pack. Um, so I'm just about to connect the positive and then um, before I connect any devices I'll, I'll just give it all a test. Uh, these leads here are for um, the shunt and the uh, servo. So the servo sits up there, it'll take 48 volt, hopefully without blowing up. A um, little bit of a big trying joke there. Um, and we've got our fuses in place, so uh, 125 amp for the solar feed. Um, I'll be able to connect that in, and then um, I've got the 200. I only need one for the inverter, um, but uh, I've got a spare here. I just thought oh, well, I'll whack it in. But uh, yeah, so uh, first stage is just, I guess, powering the bus bar, and we'll go from there. <laughs> 